to Total Mage Wednesday. First of all, I need to apologize. I did not get my video up on Wednesday or Tuesday like I intended to. I had some technical issues, some genuine technical issues, some things that you can't see that are behind the camera, some things that you can see. I had some graphics made, and definitely more work than I initially anticipated it would be to make a video every day of the week. Silly me. Sad events like the school shooting this last Wednesday in Florida always bring up the same question. Does violence in video games have an adverse effect on the people that are playing them? My initial gut response to this is no. But I am a parent. Having a child of my own sometimes makes me wonder if this could be the case. Am I exposing my child to something that could lead to a mental illness that in turn could lead to an event like happened on Valentine's Day in Florida? My response even after considering that is no. I have been around gamers and games my entire life. Gamers are some of the most meek, mild, and gentle people you will ever meet. A bit socially inept at times. On Sunday and Monday I began seeing articles appear in my news feed trying to link violence in video games to the incident that happened in Florida. After having read several of these articles, I noticed a common thread. Almost all of them quoted or cited a study done by the University of Oxford in 2012 and published in 2013 in the Journal of Psychology and Popular Media Culture. This study found that children that played video games in a social environment online with other children and teenagers tended to be more socially adept than their peers that did not. Children that played or teenagers that played games in a solitary fashion tended to be less socially adaptable to their peers that did not. They also showed to have marked improvement in academic performance. Now that seems like that's a positive. When you delve slightly farther into the research, and I did read the research, because at this point, when you have multiple art articles that are all citing this source from the University of Oxford study in 2012, but some of them have contrary opinions, but are using the same research to validate their opinion, obviously, the research has to be read. So I read it. It first makes the statement about social, socialization, um, being parallel to if you socialize online, therefore you're better socially in real life, and if you isolate online, then therefore you are more isolated in real life. I went on to further show that irrelevant of the style of video games, students that played an hour and a half or less of video games on a daily basis had a declined, a declined amount of aggression in relation to peers that didn't play video games. Students that played three hours or more had a slight increase in aggression in comparison to their peers that don't play video games. Three hours. Irrelevant of the type of video game that's being played. So this could be someone playing Mario Kart, or this could be somebody playing Dishonored, a very violent and visceral game. So after having thoroughly looked at the Oxford study from 2012, and seeing how it is being cited in crisscrossing patterns, I went to find another research that was done in the same period of time that had a differing opinion. I came across a study by Dr. Christopher Ferguson, Associate Professor and Chair of Psychology at Stetson University. Dr. Ferguson's study was a data set of violent crime in the ages of 12 to 18 from the year 1996 to the year 2011 in comparison to the growth of video game consumption in the same time. Interestingly enough, Dr. Ferguson's research showed that violent crime in 1996 was 1 1.7 million acts. By 2011, it had dropped to 1.2 million acts of violence. While video game consumption during the same time increased sevenfold. Dr. Ferguson clearly lays out a very detailed data set for this study. And the conclusion that he draws is that irrelevant of your dislike of violent video games, it's obviously not a leading cause in violence in teens. And that if you truly want to address these issues, there are three primary things that we as a society should be focusing on. 
FYI, one of them was not gun control. The three things that Dr. Ferguson cited that we should be focusing on were poverty, inequality in education, and mental health care. I think that it's obvious that when someone goes and does something so incredibly heinous as what was done in Florida on Valentine's Day, that that person is mentally ill. I think that it's an entire scapegoat scenario to try to point to video games as a boogeyman, when in reality there should be stricter laws on your ability to buy an assault rifle. It's just clear and simple. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be able to have them. I'm just saying that if you need a driver's license to drive a car and you need insurance and you have to pass a test, then maybe, just maybe, you should have to take a test, take a class, pass a psych and a background test, and carry insurance to own a weapon that you can kill 17 people with in 20 minutes. That's all I found interesting today in the industry of gaming. Until next time.